Okay, everyone, this is the Zoom chat that I've been waiting for because, you know, it's one thing to have national sportscasters and local broadcasters, but it's another thing to have family, a family member who I'm very proud of and I brag about all the time. I don't think it goes both ways, but we can talk about that. But I truly, I'm thrilled to have my first cousin, Dusty, Dusty Emo on with me today. Dusty, thanks for joining me. I know, I know you even do it, even if we weren't family, but I appreciate you coming on. No, it's, I, I felt bad I couldn't do it the last time, but uh, yeah, no, well, I do it any time for you. Awesome. And good things come to those who wait because tomorrow, actually, we're recording this on Friday, but I'm posting this on Saturday. So we can all say happy 50th birthday, Dusty. That's awesome. <laughs> oh, I'm not supposed to say that? No, you're not supposed to tell you when I'm 50. <laughs> oh, well, well, I say that because you're like the youngest, coolest 50-year-old I, I know, truly. <laughs> well, until I turn 50 in four years, but we, we got four years to figure that out. Uh, no doubt. And, and ironically, or, or fittingly, the last time we chatted was a year ago, just before you went to the KHL to, to embark on a coaching career there. So why don't we start there, Dusty? I saw a tweet which inspired me to get connect back with you, loop back with you, and, and reschedule this chat. I see this. I see a picture of you going like this, and it says, well... You're probably going to hear about it, so I'll just confirm and say nothing more. I am not going back to Kumlin Red Star of the KHL. Anyone need a goalie coach? Explain, cousin. Well, like I said in the tweet, you know, I, I was just going to tell people that I, I am not going back and I was going to leave it at that. And even though you're family, Clay, I'm going to leave it at, leave it at that for now. Um, I had a great time. I met some awesome people. The two goalies I worked with in Kunlin, Jeremy Smith and Simone Hubeck were just the best people to work for and, and, and help out. Turned into great friends actually. And um, I met uh, the coaching staff was great. Uh, in particular, Steve Casper and I became like real good buddies. So I made a real close friend in that. Uh, the travel, although it was absolutely ridiculous, uh, I had a lot of fun adventures, so, you know, I, I don't regret any of it. Um, people are, you know, probably going to ask down the stretch and, you know, uh, maybe we'll talk about it at another time, but for now, uh, I'm unemployed <laughs> and, uh, and, uh, I'm on the horn trying to, trying to find somewhere to go. So when you say, when you end off that tweet with anyone need a goalie coach, you're being serious. Uh, yeah, well, yeah, so they, <clears throat> yeah, yeah I didn't really go into the whole thing as to, you know, what's going on with Kunlin and stuff, but sure. uh, um, none of us are going back, okay. uh, staff, um, and um, yeah, so we're basically all kind of in the same boat right now, uh, you know, we're all at different points in our careers. Um, I'm hopeful and that uh, for myself and, you know, selfishly that I, I'll be fine and I'll find somewhere to work. But it is a bit different right now with COVID and, and everything that's happened. There's some challenges and, uh, you know, but we'll see, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll see uh, what comes up. You know, it's, it's, it's uh, always scary when you don't know what's coming next, but it's kind of exciting. Oh, for sure. And don't worry, I'm not going to get anyone in trouble, especially family. So we will wait till uh, the news breaks properly. Uh, but I do know of a, a team that's going to start playing in about a year and a half. That's two hours south from us. Maybe they might need a goalie coach. <laughs> but don't worry, you don't have to say anything. I don't want you to get in any more trouble. Okay. So no, no. <laughs> I, want, I would take that job. That, yeah. That's the one job. Uh, I love, I like, going over to the K and you know what um you know I'll have an agent over there uh try to uh open up some doors for me uh in the in the K because I enjoyed that experience and I don't think I was done over there I think I wanted to continue that experience but having said that if the the neighbors just below us uh wanted uh me <laughs> I'd probably take that one Awesome. So let's talk about some of your, your positive experiences from the past year. Is Kunlin the only China-based team in the K? Yeah. 
So already you're, you're already not, I want to say disadvantaged, but that's you, hence your reference to all the travel that you guys were doing or did. Yeah, no, it, it, the whole thing running that, the, that, that team under the, those kinds of situations and scenarios that they had to overcome as an organization was very difficult. Yeah. Were you guys good? So, what's that? How'd you guys do? Uh, we, we, we're like right in the playoff mix to that last game, actually. Um, so yeah, we we beat almost I think every team in the league. Yeah. Uh, so we could win at any given night. Our goalies uh, were unreal for this season, so that helped uh, help the team's chances. But we had the whole team's North American, right? Right. Yes. I was going to, I was going to ask you about that uh, before I do that. And I won't make you rehash everything, but like many of the leagues, it, it shut down pretty quick. And I, I heard you on a couple other podcasts explaining just how crazy it was for you to get out of there. You basically didn't go home, go back to your home base for a few weeks. Is that correct? Yeah, it was, no, it was actually over a month. Oh, gee. Did you so get all your, I never did go back. My, my stuff is still there. You want me to go get it for you or what? No. I don't know. We'll, we'll see if that ever shows up at my doorstep. <laughs> wow. Wow. Okay, let's <laughs> – you mentioned that all your players were North American, and I know – I looked at the roster a few times. There are some ex-Canucks on there. There's some local guys like Gilbert Brule. So uh, name, maybe just give a – you don't have to go through the whole roster, right? Maybe name a few of the guys that maybe people watching this channel would recognize the names of. Well, it's kind of funny because we had a- – in all the world, you know, you got a team in Beijing in the KHL, and we got, I think, three guys from Maple Ridge. <laughs> That's crazy. Yeah, we had uh, Garrett Hunt, who is uh, a Giants. He played for the Vancouver Giants way back in the day, a little fighter. Mm-hmm. Uh, we had Victor Bartley, uh, Nashville Predators. And uh, Brandon Yip, uh, all those, they're all Ridge boys, I think, if I'm not mistaken. Wow. And Br- uh, Brule was there. Um, who else? Adam Cracknell. Yep. I think he, didn't he do a stint in Van? Yep, like, he had a, yep, he did. Very, but he's, a, he's been a, around a lot of places. Actually, he's back in Edmonton. He, he was going to sign back with Coonland, but uh, chose to go to Edmonton back for his kind of final hurrah, you know? Huh. I saw, wasn't Hunter Shankarik on your roster as well? Oh, uh, yeah. Wow. He so, came in later on in the season. Same with uh, Smith Pelly. Oh, Devontae Smith Pelly. Wow. Yeah, they, they came later in the year. Um, and uh, just trying to think who else you might know. Like it was uh, the whole team is North American, you know, NHL American leaguers kind of thing. Wow. Wow. That's uh, and then to, to connect it with the whole Vancouver Canucks scene, did you end up playing, I guess you end up playing against facility pod Colson's team, I presume. Probably. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> yeah but I'm not going to make you go through each one. And then do you remember, do you remember playing against Nikita Trampkin? Uh, yeah, I, yeah, yeah, well, I, I'm, I'm, yeah, I will make you go through your whole. I was when you sent me that list of what you were gonna ask me, stuff, I was like, I don't even know who half these guys are, but you can ask away. <laughs> <laughs> that, that, that's fine. <laughs> um, what would you say the biggest, yeah, so you've, um, and we'll get into this, you as I mentioned last year, you coached expen- extensively in the LA Kings organization in the Winnipeg Jets organization, you you knew North American hockey, then you played uh, in Japan for many years. So what is the biggest difference to either KHL hockey or KHL hockey in Beijing compared to your other experiences? Like what are some of the different nuances in the game, if any? Well, there weren't any new things for me because I played so many years, the national program. So the, I played in the World Championships, the Olympics, and so the international play, I'd been over there so much to play that I already knew 
about the whole Russian game, the European game. So none of it was really much of a shock to me personally. Uh, but if you're actually comparing the, the, the different types of uh, games, you know, North American to, to KHL or Europe in general, uh, it's very different. But I, I will say this though, the gap in, in the difference has gotten smaller because of the rule changes, because of the diversity of the leagues, and there's so many Europeans in the NHL anyway. So it's like, even if it's a North American game, there's all kinds of European flavor in the North American game, right? It's, whereas when I played, it was like, you know, this beat the, oh, beat the, <laughs> beat, beat up the team and to win the hockey game. And then you go to Europe and it's like, ooh, skate around. Now it's a little bit of a mix, right, in North America. So the gap as far as the difference is closed. Uh, you know, there's still that little bit of difference as far as the mentality of the game. There's still that edge, that Canadian, North American kind of edge that, you know, our team, for example, brought. We, we got considered, you know, for quite a part of the year as the goon team. Uh, and we weren't even fighters, you know what I mean? But so the physicality uh, is definitely not really there in the K uh, that there is in North America. Yeah. No, great question. Uh, great answer, Dusty. And the, the teams that do really well in the K, are they because they're simply the most skilled or do they have one or two superstars or what makes a really good team in the K, at least from what you saw? <laughs> There's, I will say this. There's some high-end skilled hockey teams on the top top end of the league. Yeah. This Ska and CSK and, and uh, those types of teams, uh, they're, you know, and they pay well too. Like, it's, I was shocked when I first went over there how good it is. But uh, there's definitely talent. So I would say... You know they all they they're in great shape. They work hard. They're 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 specimens as far as athletes are concerned. But mm -hmm. they definitely have the best players. So <laughs> yeah, they I would say talent is basically they have the most money, the most talent. Yeah. So it is. Uh, I'm sure. Do teams operate under a, a salary cap and everything as well, or is it less rigid as say maybe the NHL? Less rigid. <laughs> Good answer. <laughs> we'll, we'll leave it at that. No, that's cool. So what's, what's the one thing that you will appreciate, aside from the chance to work with some young goaltenders, which is what you're so good at, is, is mentoring young goalies and hanging around with the North American crew, the goon squad. What's the one thing you will take away from your experience, Dusty, in the, in the K? Uh, just learning about you know being open to all kinds of different you know i played over in japan europe and everything but it'd been many years yeah same and you kind of get sucked back into the north america way of life and and you kind of get in a bubble and when i went and left the nhl and left la i i'm happy i did that because and what I, you asked to answer your question, but what I take from it is, uh, I learned to I learned to appreciate everything else that's out there, and the different types of people, and and uh, I, I I will take that more than anything because, like I told you, I met great people, I, all these different things. But in general, to answer your question, it was the fact that there's so much out there in, in the world to explore, and I'm very appreciative of that. No, oh, that's cool. Uh, no, I know you've always been very humble, very grateful that way. And the reason why I asked you about Podkosin and, and Trampkin, and then I realized how stupid that was because you're not like a Vancouver Canucks goalie coach. Sure, you grew up in Vancouver, but it's not like I expect you to know all of our players and our draft picks. You're like, you got other things to worry about. But <laughs> I do know that Podkosin does play for Scott St. Petersburg. So I presume that was the, that's the good team, or at least one of them. Yeah. Yeah, cool, cool, cool. All right, let's uh, come back to this side of the, the water, so to speak. Um, given that you grew up and you excelled, you know, you're a junior in the, in the 90s, basically late 80s, early 90s, and then you're, you're 
your, your, yeah, 80s, then your pro career, your Olympic career in the 90s, and now coaching basically from, uh, you know, the last decade or, or more. I'm curious, and I know a lot of people that watch this, they've played the game or they understand the game. What's the biggest difference in the way goaltending is played now than when you were coming up through the ranks? No, it's a it's a pretty broad question, pretty yeah. tough than one thing, but um, their kids get schooled from such a young age, so they're they're taught so many different things. So in general, they're better. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I mean, they're, they're more they're they're more schooled and 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 uh, they're more uh, educated. You know, I mean, so they're more they're more finely tuned in so many different things that they just are better uh, better goalies. But uh, I, I to answer that, and then I also say some of the def- the problems with today and the kids and is there's not a lot of individuality in their in their playing and to be able to go outside the box sometimes and make saves and stuff like that. The athleticism got kind of pushed aside a little bit for a few years, for quite a few years. And it's coming back though. Mm -hmm. I coach myself and there's other coaches out there and they're also the kind of the balance, the the scale tips back and forth between scores and goalies. And it's like uh, the goalies get so good and then the shooters figure them out and because you know for years the the goalies started do playing this butterfly drop and block style and they're huge and shooters couldn't figure them out and goals against went like this and then shooters started figuring out these guys and that they're not making saves they're just you know blocking area and they started figuring that out and then goalies started having to use their feet more and move around more and be better. So it kind of goes like this, right? Yeah. And right seeing a lot more athletic goalies coming into the mix. But uh, the difference between when I played and when they played is just they have more tools in the toolbox, you know? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, no, I hear you. And I, as I look at the nice um, jerseys behind you, and we won't tell all the stories that we told uh, last year. I'm going to link to that that uh, that interview, that lengthy interview we did last year, where you t- told some really cool stories about the Olympics. And but that is yours and Jonah's jerseys from that night, correct? That there, yeah. That's pretty awesome. Yeah. So uh, many of you guys know the story already. Dusty uh, addressed as a backup for his son Jonah, who started. And uh, I will I will share the link to those stories down below in the but um, in the description. But that yeah, that's a really really nice. You were the seventy. Yeah, that's my number of my whole career. Yeah, because that's the year you're born. That's no. Everybody thinks that's why. When I started back in the day playing pro, and I it was one of the first times they were like, you can pick any number. What do you want? And I was like. I always loved seven, but I, if if I was a forward, yeah, and uh, I was like, so I had to turn it into a goalie number. That was I it. Love it, and it just turned. It's by coincidence. It's your birth year as well, because you're 50 years old today. Uh, thank you. <laughs> So one of the guys that you spent a lot of time working with in Winnipeg was just nominated for the Vesna Trophy. So you may have heard that it's Connor Hallebach, it's Tuka Rask, and it's Andre Vasilevsky. Um, yeah. So those guys, like Hallebach and, and Vasilevsky, are quite, actually, Rask is quite big as well, isn't he? Oh, he's tall. He's not, yeah. a, not as tall as them. Yeah. What do you like about those three guys? Uh, and you can talk about Connor the most because I know you actually worked with them in the Winnipeg organization. But um, those three in particular, why are they Vesna? Uh, aside from that, they're good. Like, what about their games makes them so good? Do you think? They're all. They're three of them are very different. Uh, but I think I don't know the other two personally. So I. But I. From what I've heard, I know from uh, Boots uh, Peter Budai told me when he left me from LA to go to Tampa, he backed up Vasilevsky and he told me uh, Vasi was a se- severe uh, competitor, like, like very, very competitive. 
and I heard the same about Rask, mm -hmm. and I know that about Connor. So, in that sense, that's probably where you're, the only area you'll find the similarities, and that they both all stop the puck pretty darn well. Uh, but they're they're all very fierce competitors. Um, Connor plays pretty much different than anyone else. He has his own. He has a very unique style, but one thing he he does have is that fierce uh, competitive edge and uh, confidence as well, for sure. And then you uh, you did two years in the Winnipeg Jets organization, correct? Yeah, the first one was with Hutch. Yeah. And then he went up, and then the next year was with Helly, and then he went up. Okay, and very truly, I know it's – Easy to say, oh, of course I knew, but but even back then, six or seven years ago, did you see something in, in Connor Hellebuck that said this guy could do some damage in the league? Oh, yeah, for sure. Yeah. Yeah. In his very first year, he had, he had a great year, first year in the American League. And, uh, yeah. I, I Are you surprised? I, I wasn't surprised at all. I, 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 I think maybe I was uh, – not surprised, but I'm uh, very happy, happily surprised that it, it, it happened uh, as quickly as it did. But when you think about it, when you get someone from college, it's a little bit different, right? They've had a little more time to mature. They're not as much kids. They've had, you know, he was he was chomping at the bit to get up there and, and ready. So, um, but yeah, no, I'm not surprised. Yeah, awesome. On the flip side, Dusty, are you surprised that, say, Michael Hutchinson hasn't caught on maybe in the same way, given the, that you worked with him at the same time? You know what? Everybody's careers take different paths and different things happen. And uh, for, for Michael, uh, when he first went up to Winnipeg, I really thought he, he was going to turn into the number one guy there. And and uh, Connor was just nipping on his heels. Mm -hmm. and so you get bounced somewhere else and things don't go perfectly at that place. And then it kind of just goes like this. And it's hard to, it's hard as a, as a player, not just a goalie, to sometimes deal with some of the changes and, and staff changes, you know, with one organization. And you need someone in your corner, right? Um, you go to a new, new place and they might not really care or think as highly of you. And um, if you, if you battle that with, it can kind of mess with your mind. And I think uh, it was a tough scenario for my Michael to, to deal with, especially in Toronto. It was a, yeah. it, it was a tough, a tough, uh, it's a tough uh, market. And, um, but I, I'm hopeful that he'll find his way and, and uh, find his game again. Awesome. So then two years in Winnipeg and then four years, correct, in the LA Kings organization? Yeah. And I know you worked a lot and we, we've heard some good stories about Jack Campbell, Peter Budai, Jeff Zakov. And then is it Cal Pedersen or Peterson? Peterson. Peterson. Uh, he, I know you, you think, you think strong, uh, very highly of his game, don't you? Yeah, yeah, no, he's he's going to be a, a, in my opinion, I think he can be like a top five, like a he can be an elite goalie. I, I believe he, given the op right opportunity and the and the tut tutelage along the way, uh, even though I, I'm not there anymore, <laughs> uh, I yeah, I, I, uh, I I really think highly of him for sure. That's awesome. Yeah, no, I know we had some fun last time when LA was in. Vancouver uh, a year no was it I guess it was uh, a year and a half ago when when he came in and we had the joke about the Peterson versus Pedersen thing yeah 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 yeah, 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 yeah. Um, why so here's another question Dusty given your your expertise in goaltending whether you look locally and you hear Corey Hirsch and John Garrett on the on the airwaves everyone loves John Garrett and you look at guys like Darren Pang and other guys throughout the league why do goaltenders make such good color commentators are you guys that much smarter than every other positional player or what <laughs> i think the word color is fits 
fits the bill for a goalie. You know what I mean? There's a lot of those, a lot of those guys you mentioned have uh, a lot of personality. And I yeah. think a lot of goalies generally do. Not all. I know some stiffs. But <laughs> generally, uh, they, they have a lot of personality. Uh, sometimes, you know, like, you know, I, my buddy Weeksy, like huge personality. You know, uh, there's all kinds. Uh, it's funny, you mentioned Hershey was just here not too long ago in, this, in my office, and I, we did a guitar lesson here. Oh, sweet. Yeah. Wait, you gave him the guitar lesson or one of his family members? Him? Yeah, he's starting to, he's been playing guitar for a little while now and he, he you know, follows my Instagram and stuff. So he was, he was, uh, he's, we it took a while to finally set it up, but he drove all the way out here because he lives downtown, right? Uh. So he drove all the way to White Rock and I gave him a guitar lesson. Okay, well, down the road, new Canucks song or new parody song, Me, You, and Hershey. What do you think? <laughs> uh, he needs a little work. <laughs> Oh, that's awesome. And I'm going to get to your, your social media in, in a couple seconds. Um, and one thing that we talked about last year, and I thought it was quite fascinating, you just mentioned that goaltenders, they're very colorful personalities, their character is larger than life sometimes. So a lot of people ask about superstitions, both of players, uh, you know, skaters and goalies. Um, I know we talked about this last year, but remind me, did you have any superstitions as a goaltender, either in the locker room, pregame, postgame, whatever? You know what? If you would have asked me a while ago when I was playing, I would have said no. But I think back to all the stuff I did. Well, over my – I played 15 years uh, pro, and I did the same, a lot of the same things all the time. So, hence, <laughs> that would be a superstition. You know, like, I don't think I consciously – all the t there were a few things that I, if I didn't do them, I was like, well, that's not cool. <laughs> like, uh, I, I always put on my right skate first. Ah. And I just didn't like to not do that. Yeah. Now, I thought that I was going to lose a hockey game if I didn't do that. Uh, but, yeah, there, I don't think I was really big. I did certain things in the net that I always did. Uh, like, I did that some weird thing before the face-off. Uh, with hitting my pads and and stuff like that, but I don't know that they were really superstitions. I just liked I liked routine. You know what I mean? Yeah, maybe routine is a better way of putting it for sure. But you you definitely had yours. Oh yeah, I had some. <laughs> What's the stick thing like uh, with your pads? Just hitting them in a certain order? Uh, your people that watched a lot of me would probably know. I I can't even really imitate it until I'm on the ice. It's weird. I can't. Jonah and, and and people remember me doing it all the time, but yeah, I haven't done it for so long. I can't remember. <laughs> well, maybe you should resurrect it for your TikTok. <laughs> so let's uh, we'll talk about that just just for a few minutes, just to have some fun. So you're quite at Instagram. You do a lot of your music. You're you're a very good guitar player in all seriousness, and hence that's why you're teaching other guys. Um, and then on TikTok, I know you're having a lot of fun with some of these lip syncs and stuff. Um, you're probably one of the older guys I know on TikTok, to be honest with you, but you do make it look cool. What inspired you to fool around on TikTok? It's funny, like COVID, <laughs> the boredom, you know, uh, of what was, there was literally, you could only play guitar and watch Netflix so much. And, uh, you know, and I'm not, kids aren't kids. So I was kind of losing my mind and I saw I can't even remember what, how I saw it or, or I saw something on Insta. Or, and so I thought, ah, screw it. I downloaded TikTok just to see. And I watched it for the first while, maybe count, but I just would watch stuff for the first while. And then I finally, I, it was the weirdest thing. It's, it's almost like it's built into their system. Like they get like it's some kind of, I don't know. They're watching it's, you sucks you in and they finally made me cave and I did one and I thought it was the dumbest thing in the world I'm never going to do it again and and then I did another one and then then I, then, I, then I, you know over time I I would go on and it made me laugh I other people's stuff I thought it was hilarious I was like 
some of the stuff is so stupid and people just showing them they're they're re losing their minds so they're trying to have some fun and they you, it's kind of this community right and and then the artistic side of things with the music and the the lips the talking out the acting and the the comedy of it all i i had a great time with it and I, it was a savior for me, I'll be honest with you, through all this. No, I'm happy to hear that. Well, I'll tell you something else that will, will probably make you feel good. My three kids, Sean, Jacob, and Kayla, they have basically prohibited, banned, whatever word you want to use. I am not allowed to do anything on there because they just think I'm going to make myself look like even more of a fool than I already do. But they, yet they go to my cousin Dusty's page and they think it's the best thing ever. So... <laughs> I don't know. So what's your TikTok account for anyone who does want to follow you on there? Uh, I don't even know the name. <laughs> I don't. You'll have to look at it. Dusty, <laughs> Dusty 70, maybe. It, okay. It's something like that. I don't but know. It, but if oh, they no. go to... Might be just Dusty Emo. Okay, Dusty Emo. Okay, good. Um, and then your Instagram, do you know? Is it... Uh, that might be dusty emo as well but i do know if we go to your twitter account they'll be able to find posts to your instagram and that's dusty 70 yeah i do know that very cool all right dusty let's end off i'm gonna i usually do this uh, six pack with this very quick questions and three of them are connects related but i've changed them to be more goalie uh goalie specific questions that i think people will get a kick out of so you can answer these as as long or as short as you want whatever you want to do okay yep number one are you an extrovert or an introvert? I'm in the middle. Oh, well, that's not much fun. <laughs> okay. Uh, extrovert. Okay. Okay. Number two, a current or former NHL goalie that people would know that you'd say your playing style is most similar to. Does that have to be perfect, but similar? Quickie? Yeah. Maybe, kinda. I don't. Yeah. Yeah. Tell us why. Because I used to love to just dive around and make days, and Quickie's yeah, unbelievable at doing that. You know, very acrobatic, athletic. Yes, I, I look alike, or but that that similarity, I guess maybe. Yeah, I do tell everyone you are the most athletic, quickest goalie I've ever seen. But how tall? <laughs> how and how big are you right now? Like five? How? Well, I was five eight. Now I'm about five six. Okay. Well, you're, you're my height. So, but you played at five eight one. What? What was your weight? Uh, <laughs> one fifty. Wow. So there aren't a lot of five eight one fifty goalies right now, are there? <laughs> <laughs> no. All right. Number three: Netflix or Disney Plus? Netflix. What are you watching right now? Anything cool? G, uh, GD Haji or something. Uh, it's two Japanese words, duty and um, something. It's it's a mix, half in Tokyo, half in London. Oh, it drama. Cop, yeah, cop uh, murder. Okay. Kind of, it's but it's really cool for me because it it brings back a lot of memories. No, that's awesome. Oh, that's very cool. And you being half Japanese, right? Obviously, our dads are uh, brothers in the Japanese side. So together, we make one full Japanese person. So that almost counts. Okay, number four. Oh, yep. I already asked this one, but I'm just going to ask it uh, again, and you can say it a different way. Biggest thing you learned from your time in the KHL? Um, that there's a whole world to explore. I was learned to be very appreciative of it. Awesome. Number five, and you won't offend me either way because I'm half of each, as you know. Do you prefer Japanese food or Chinese food? <laughs> not, not even close. Like, not even close. Like, so not even close. It's, it's like, you could pick any other food and Japanese food, and it would be closer. <laughs> Sorry, buddy. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. Which one are you saying that you like? <laughs> I... Dislike Chinese food. Yo, me too. So much. I, especially, and no, I'm not saying 
disrespectfully over there, but real Chinese food? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> for me, s sorry, Chinese people, but for me, <laughs> no, it's not happening. You know what's so funny? I ask, this is such a stupid question, but I ask it to all my guests because then I make the whole joke of, you know, obviously my dad's Japanese, mom's Chinese, and you, you won't offend me either way. As I asked you that, knowing that you're half Japanese, but then I completely forgot that you just spent the last year of your life in, <laughs> in China. So Yet Chinese food, no. Okay. And here's the last one. Your favorite goalie of all time. Grand Fear. Tell us why. The guy is cool as a cucumber. Uh, and just was like, meh. You know, he just went out, let in six goals, win the hockey game, he was happy. Have you met him, worked with him on any, in any organization or any I've, functions? I've never worked with him. Uh, it's kind of weird because I've met so many people along the way, but of all people that I probably would like to meet, I've never met him. Uh, uh, but yeah, and he had a wicked glove hand. Yeah, and not he very was, big. Like he was clo closer, more when I was actually getting older and closer to playing. Like when I was little, little, uh, it was cl more like guys like the Cesar Maniego and then Richard Broder, because they were Canucks goalies, right? Kurt Ridley. Yeah. But I was. But once I became older, Grand Fear. And then Ranford came after Fear, right? He replaced him. He was after, yeah. Yeah, but he was the next guy, basically, correct? Yeah. Won the cup once guys started to disperse right. and then Ranford came in yeah right and then you have a really good working relationship with Bill Ranford yeah long long time we've known each other since I was like 16 years old too so because we skated together in the summers when right from when I because I played in the same junior team he did right very cool well Dusty thank you for taking time on your birthday eve but as people watch this um, they can all greet you. Uh, happy 50th. Uh, I said it again. A happy birthday. <laughs> and I truly, uh, yeah, family notwithstanding, I truly hope everything works out as you wind down uh, that chapter of your career and look forward to the next one. Um, yeah, and we'll wait to hear uh, more official stuff, I guess, as it comes out from with respect to that. But yeah, thanks yeah. again. Yeah, no, thanks again. And uh, hey, last thing before I let you go, uh, out of 10, What's your excitement level on this whole NHL return to play, phase three, phase four, hub cities? How excited are you, if you are? I could really give a rat's duda about all of, all of the stuff going on, all of the white noise about camps and this and that. But once it's on the television, I'm like any, any hockey fan. I love hockey. I, I, it'll be, the one thing that'll be cool is there's going to be hockey on all the time yeah so that's what i'm excited about i love I, I still love the game so i'm excited to see the game again being played all this other stuff and it's it's draining the news is draining for me but i'm excited to see the league back in up and running for sure awesome well we're happy to have you back home and uh thanks for joining us and thank you for being the first person to use the term rats duda on my zoom chats oh. You gotta be clean. Like I, I gotta be clean on your channel, right? Like, because <laughs> it's past you. Like, what am I gonna do? As soon as I hit the stop record, you can say whatever you want. Okay, thanks a lot, Dusty. I appreciate it. Happy birthday once again. All right, buddy.